Hello and welcome back to another episode of Math with Sone. Today we are going to be doing rotational kinematic equations. And uh, just as a quick review so you know what, what everything is, uh, the theta is the change in angle, typically in terms of radians. The W is uh, actually the velocity, the angular velocity, and that W symbol stands for omega. And then this thing that looks like an A is alpha, and it stands for the angular acceleration. T, of course, stands for time, and the I's and the F stand for initial and final. Okay, so we got a few examples to get through, and uh, then, we'll, then we'll be done. Let's do this. Okay, so our first example is, uh, going to go over something that happens a lot with these types of problems, and that would be that sometimes the information provided is just not in the right format. Uh, for two things here, first off, it's in terms of minutes, both 800 revolutions per minute and 500 revolutions per minute, and even revolutions. We want to think of this in terms of angles, not revolutions. So we need to convert the 800 revolutions or 800 spins around a circle and turn that into how many degrees, specifically in terms of radians, that actually is. Okay, so we're gonna do that first. We got 800 revolutions every single minute. Well, if you have 800 revolutions every single minute, each revolution is one spin, so if you multiplied that by two pi, you would be able to figure out how many, like what would be the angle that would happen every minute. But we don't want it in terms of minute, we actually want it in terms of seconds. So what would be the conversion to go from minutes to seconds? Well, that would mean that you would take every minute and you divide by 60. And if we do that, if we do 800 times two pi over 60, you end up with 80 pi over three radians per second, which is the real omega or angular velocity that we would need, okay? So that's our first angular velocity. If we do the same thing with the 500 revolution times two pi over 60, you would end up with 50 pi over three radians per second. It's probably a good idea to write rad rather than r because then you might think it's ra uh, uh, radius. And last but not least, if you have 60 revolutions, how big of an angle is 60 revolutions? Well. 60 revolutions, each one of those revolutions is one way around the circle, and one way around the circle is two pi in terms of radians, which means we have gone 120 pi radians, and that would be kind of like saying, I don't know, that's like, that's a lot of degrees. Um, that's like um, a few thousand degrees in terms of like normal 360 degree increments, okay? So those informations are going to, these three, three values are gonna be needed just so we can even start this problem. The thing that we need to figure out first is what is the angular acceleration? Well, if we wanna figure out the angular acceleration, we need to go back to the kinematic formulas and think which one will we need. Okay, so out of these, which one would we need? So we have our beginning angular velocity, so that would be wi. We have our final uh, angular velocity, that would be the WF, and we have the angular displacement. This is the change in angle. Okay, so we don't have time. We have final velocity and initial velocity, I pointed at the wrong things, and we have the angular displacement. If we're looking for acceleration, we don't want an equation with time, so that's gonna limit which ones we would use. This has time, that has time. This one doesn't have time, this middle one, so we're gonna use that. So it is going to be, the angular velocity squared equals the angle initial velocity squared plus two alpha, the angular acceleration, delta theta. All right, so manipulating this equation if you wanted to, or you can plug it in from here. Uh, AP likes to manipulate and then plug in. So we're, gonna su we're searching for the angular acceleration, so we're gonna subtract the wi. We get wf squared minus wi squared equals two alpha times your change in your angle, the delta theta. We are looking for alpha, this angular acceleration, so we're gonna divide by two and gonna divide by the delta theta. So if we do that, if we divide by two and by the delta theta, those would cancel out, leaving us with our alpha. And then we can plug in everything. All the information we had, we have our W final, 
That's the 50, point, uh, 50 pi over three. I'm plugging all this stuff in right here. 50 pi over three squared. And that's in radians per second. Minus 80 pi over three squared, and that's in radians per second, divided by two times um, our angle that we have, which is uh, blah, 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 120 pi. You do all that, and that's in terms of radians. You square this, you minus the square of that, you divide by two times 120 pi, you do all that basic math in your calculator, and you will get negative 5.7 5 radians per second squared, and that would be your alpha and or your angular acceleration. Now ask yourself if that makes sense. It is negative, so that, that's a little alarming for some people, but think about it. We were going 800 revolutions per minute, and now we're going 500 revolutions per minute, which means we have slowed down. And if you have slowed down, you have decelerated, which is explaining why this is negative, okay? So I'm gonna fill in the answer to that. That was negative 5.7 radians per second squared. And then I'm gonna keep referencing all the other things that we had at some point. All right, how long does it take the wheel to slow down? Well, now that you have your angular acceleration, you actually have a lot of options. You could have done this problem first by doing everything here and just solve for time. Uh, but now that we have the alpha, you have the mobility and the freedom to choose a lot of different formulas, which I'm gonna choose the easiest one because we have our WF, we have our WI, the alpha, the omega. Um, we have that angular initial and final, and we have the acceleration. So I'm just gonna use this one right here. If we do that, it would be WF equals WI, it's not W, but it's easier for me to say than omega alpha time. All right, plugging in everything into that and maybe even subtracting and dividing, you would end up with um, WF is 50 pi over three from our previous answer minus 80 pi over three from our previous answer would equal what we just found out, negative 5.7 times time. You would subtract and then divide. If you subtract those and then divide, you figure out that the time is, drum roll, 5.5 approximately. 5.5 seconds for your time. Okay? Find the linear speed of an object 0.35 millimeter meters from the center of the wheel. At least it's in terms of meters because that is the SI standard unit. If you do that, remember that linear speed is the outside arc is your radius times your angular velocity, out, out, uh, blah, blah, omega. So we have the radius 0.35. We have our angular velocity. What was the angular velocity when it was spinning at 500 meters per second? Well, the 500 meters per second, we did 500 times two pi over 60, we got 50 pi over three. So this would be multiplied by 50 pi over three. And you do that calculation and you get 18 meters per second. Okay, so what that means and why that's important is let's say that this was, um, let's say that this is a distance of 0.35. At that point, it's going on the outside edge at 18 meters per second, curling around the outside edge. But if you lengthened it, or even if you shortened it, if you shortened it, what would happen? Would it be going faster or slower? It would actually be going slower. So if this was 0.2, it would be going a little bit slower. And that makes sense because we multiplied our radius times our angular speed. Okay, so you're, because you're multiplying it, the bigger your radius, the more speed you are actually going around the circle with. Okay? All right. Got two more examples. I might do two, I might do one. The angular acceleration of a wheel is four radians per second squared. How many revolutions does the wheel make in the first six, six seconds of its, uh, of its, of everything if it is initially at rest, okay? So first and foremost, radians per second squared, correct format. Six seconds, that's the correct format. Our answer is going to be having to be converted because we're gonna get our first answer and then we're gonna have to convert it into revolutions. We need to figure out how many revolutions, which is very similar, similar 
it relates, it is not actually the change in angle, but it, it relates to it. So we need to find something that has a delta theta. We need to find something that has a acceleration and a time. All right, well, let's look. We got, we gotta find one. Well, hang on, what else do we know? Actually, I forgot. It's initially at rest. What does that mean about our initial speed is zero. So we also could use something with a WI. Let's see if we have a WI in here anywhere. WI, angle, alpha, looks like the top one to me. So I'm gonna rewrite that for you. Delta theta will equal WI times T plus one half alpha T squared. So our change and our angle will equal our initial velocity, which is zero, nice, times t would still be zero, plus one half alpha, what is our alpha? We were going at four radians per second squared, times our time, which is six. We do the math here, we do six squared times four times one half, you find out that the change in angle that you get is 72 radians. Now it is not asking for the angle. It is asking for how many revolutions it is. Well, remember that each revolution is equal to two pi. If each revolution is equal to two pi, we have 72 radians here. We need to figure out how many times that happened and therefore we would divide by two pi to figure out how many revolutions that would be. So if you do 72 divided by two pi, you get 11.4 revolutions. All right. Do we wanna do one more? Do we wanna do one more? Looking at the last one, seeing if it has anything unique. And it really doesn't. Um, it, it's just doing a complete, another example. If you want, I might do it in a different video, but it, and the, this video is already 12 minutes long. This has nothing different in it than any of the others. It might use a different kinematic equation, but that's just using a different kinematic equation given what you have, all right? So I look forward to seeing you in the next one when we talk about torque on an object, which is taking the kinematics and actually applying some force to it, okay? I will see you then. Stay positive, my friends.